So you got a Mercedes and you're trying to find the brake light switch. Uh, you look in the spot that all the forums tell you to on the brake pedal and it's not there. Where'd it go? Let me show you where it's at. It's a brake pressure sensor. It's no longer a brake light switch. Not in all models, in most models. In my description down below, I'm going to list every model and whether it has a brake pressure sensor or a brake switch or a combination of the two. So basically in 2002, in the C-Class and the ML163, uh, they switched to a brake pressure sensor for the certain for the ESP system. Why? Maybe it's more defined. You get pressure easier than you get uh, pedal movement. Maybe for um, all the problems with the the brake switch and the movement. I, I'm not sure, but uh, <clears throat> you'll have one if not two. And why do they have two? For redundancy. Redundant means we'll say the same thing repeated. So if you have two pressure sensors and one of them is showing pressure and the other one's not, uh, you got a problem with the, with the switch, right? Um, especially if you're not pressing the brake pedal. So most times when the ESP light comes on the dash, it'll, it'll trigger a fault code for the, for the brake light switch. It's because in, the, in a brake light switch, there's two circuits. One is making contact. The other one is not making contact. Then when you press the switch, the one that's making contact breaks contact, and the other one that wasn't making contact makes contact. So it's another redundant signal. It just uses reverses. So it's looking for one thing, and it's looking to see it go away, and the other one is looking for no signal, and then it's looking for a signal. So in the early systems, uh, when they switched to the brake switch, I'm sorry, the pressure switch, they only used one, but then a few months later, or maybe a year or two later, they started using two of them, uh, and then down the road, they went to a brake position uh, sensor again under the dash. So I'll list in the comments. I'll try to do it from all the way from, uh, I'll try to do it as much as I can. Um, and if for some reason your car is not listed, just ask me on the comments where it's at and I'll tell you where it's at. All right. Uh, I'm going to try to see with the iCarsoft right now, show you what signal the ESP module is looking for. So let's hope it works. All right. So I'm in the car and I got my iCarsoft version 2.0 hooked up. I'm going to show you the values that the ESP module sensor, or I'm sorry, I'm going to show you the values that the ESP module is looking for from the sensor slash switch. All right, so from the top, bah, need an assistant who wants to do it. Uh, you're going to pick the ESP module. We're going to go to view data. And we're going to go to ESP sensors. And here's the screen. Now look at it. Right now it's reading 1.30 bar, 1.31 bar, 1.5. That's a problem with the switch already, or the sensor we'll call it, pressure sensor. Because I'm not pressing the brake pedal. It shouldn't be reading any pressure right now because the pedal the pedal's not being pressed. And the fact that it's bouncing around like that tells me that the, that the pressure sensor is bad. Um, I, th I would like to think that the module adapts itself to the sensor. So the more it wears, the more it knows that it's okay to vary like that, but I'm gonna go ahead and press the, press the brake. And based on the pressure input, it shows what I'm doing, all right? So that's what you have to look for when you're testing that, that pressure sensor. You're looking for the actual value to change with pressure input or, or brake pedal activation, all right? But in a nutshell, that's, that's where your sensor's at. Now, one thing I wanna make you aware of is most people say, uh, hey, my ESP or ABS light is on the dash. Um, I went online, a forum said it's a brake light switch. You know, I changed it and didn't fix anything. So the problem with that is that uh, it could be, a, it could be a blown fuse for the brake light switch because there's two different circuits. Sometimes it uses the same fuse for both circuits. Sometimes it uses two fuses for both circuits. Uh, sometimes it's not fused and the module has a problem with the wiring. So me, in, in my experience, I never, ever, ever replace something because it's the most common failure. I always do diligence and do the diagnostics. I know all of you guys that are watching this probably don't own a scanner. You might not, you might not be near anybody that has a scanner. Uh, the best thing I can say is if you don't follow the right process, 
you're going to add variables to the problem because no, uh, you can't assume anything. So a new part doesn't mean it's a good part. So if you start buying parts and putting them in and it didn't fix your issue, it doesn't mean you weren't right. It, it means that you could still have a bad part. Man, uh, doing this 20 years, nothing surprises me anymore. I no longer get shocked at the things that I see that, that happen with cars. So I ran into issues where I've gotten three bad parts from the same manufacturer or there was a bad run. It happens. It happens. People tell me all the time online, but I just replaced that. I don't care. That doesn't mean anything to me. If you didn't test it, we don't know what we're doing here, right? So I don't want to sound uh, condescending, like I'm talking down to you or anything like that. It's just that for me, in your best interest is to do it the right way. Anytime the warning light comes on the dash, the first thing you do is you obtain a scanner and you read the fault codes. Once you read the fault codes, if you don't know what the fault codes mean, reach out to me or start Googling for what the fault code means. However, again with the Google, uh, with a fault code, you have to read what the fault code is telling you. Uh, they're, they're not always black and white. Sometimes it leaves room for interpretation, which I don't like. Let's say it says circuit fault. That means the module is looking for a signal return and it's not getting it. Or it's outputting uh, amperage, but it's not seeing the amperage being consumed. Or it's outputting ground and it's not seeing a ground return. When it comes to the term circuit fault, it's either a connection, a wire, uh, it could be a fuse, it could be an open circuit inside the part that the circuit's trying to work, or it could be a bad control module. What I'm going to do is uh, make a video on fault codes and how to interpret them. It's going to be a long one too because there's, there's so many different things you can do. But step one with any warning in the dash, get a code reader, a scanner that can read all of the control modules so you can read it because just because the ESP BAS light or ABS or uh, any kind of track, we got so many traction uh, synonyms, acronyms, just because the warnings on the dash doesn't mean the fault is with that system. The fault can be someplace else, but because that module doesn't like what it's seeing, it sets the warning. So in order to do it the right way, always, always, always obtain a scanner some way, somehow and read the codes. And it has to be a good scanner. No, O'Reilly's ain't gonna help you. AutoZone's not gonna help you. Napa's not gonna help you. Uh, iCarsoft is not a bad brand. We recently ran into an issue where a customer, uh, a YouTuber reached out to me and uh, we tried to fix his SRS light. The, iCar the iCarsoft would not erase the codes in the airbag module. So all the testing we did, and even with trying a new module, uh, it didn't do anything. So he went to another mechanic that used a better scanner and Gosh darn it, the code's erased. So it was a learning point for both of us. And, and to my fact too, that uh, when you're working with stuff that's not original equipment, you got to be careful. Um, it can read wrong fault codes. It can miss fault codes. It can not clear fault codes. So the car world is tricky. So I'm trying to make videos which help you understand that. Um, so again, uh, you know, I like to ramble. As far as the brake light switch is concerned, it's not always on the brake pedal. If it's not on the brake pedal, it's on the master cylinder. Easy as that. If you have one, it's probably the problem with the one, or it could be the connector to it, the wiring to the module, or the module itself, right? I'm not saying order a module, order wiring, order the sensor, because you never know what else it can be. Um, it's it's always, always got to do due diligence and testing. And the sad part is, is that when you find a fault code, there is no manual that we have to go to the fault code and figure out the test steps. Our fault codes are inside the Mercedes scanner. So when I read the code, I click enter on the code and then it brings me to the test. That's the only way we find tests. The only way I'm able to help people with those codes is because I bought a Zentry that has a simulator and you can pretend to diagnose fault codes and then it gives me the test step. So I'm able to help that way. Um, I'm not saying go buy one. I'm just saying that's how I get around doing that. But uh, there's no other scanner that does that but the factory scanner, and we have no manuals that I'm aware of that brings you down fault codes. In the old cars we did, but once they came out with the SDS, uh, the Star Diagnostic System, uh, it, it all went integrated into the scanner, and that's it. Even in WIS, if we look in WIS, sometimes you can find fault codes for engine and transmission, 
Um, and it's tricky to try to find them for, for other modules, but even then you can't just search by a fault code. It's, it's in one aspect, it's terrible, but in the other aspect, when you have a Mercedes scanner, you don't need to worry about it, you know? So it's, it's, I know it's rough for you guys out there, but, uh, um, if you get a fault code that says no fault code found or, or no description found, just, you know, email me with the code. And, and if I can not email me, but check in the comments or, or, uh, whatnot, and I'll try to post on there you know, what the code means, if it'll help you out. But uh, again, it's hard for me to diagnose cars in the comments. I don't want to mislead anybody. And as much as I'd like to, um, it's hard for me to spend time diagnosing stuff on, on the comments. So uh, I'm trying to make videos like this that'll help you without you needing to reach out to anybody, you know what I mean? You know, so um, I YouTubed uh, how to replace a brake light switch and I don't see any videos that show the pressure switch. So that's why I decided to make one. I vowed to myself I would never make a brake light switch video. And here I am. I sold out. I sold out to myself for you guys. But uh, if, you, if you're looking to replace it and you replace it, it didn't fix anything, you know, that, that's a victim of the internet, you know, uh, finding, again, the most common problem doesn't mean that yours is it. So um, I think that's enough rambling for now. You guys can reach out to me at www.cartechconnect.com. Um, I will put in the description or in the comment section, uh, all the models and where the stuff is located. And uh, if there's videos you guys would like to see, let me know and I'll do my best to do them. I'm gonna try to order some more scanners and, and do some more reviews because I'd like to see what else is out there. I, I came across a new brand recently that was a new name for me and they seem to do pretty good. I gotta, I gotta get one of those ordered, but uh, you guys be safe out there. I appreciate you watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe, set and uh, hit the notification button. And if you could, if you know friends and family with Benz or whatnot, send them my link. You never know what can help them out. Um, appreciate you guys. Take care.